Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to Getting Sketchy. What is Getting Sketchy? Well, it's a live broadcast here on YouTube where we draw an object or a subject in a timed frame. Basically what we need to do is we need to draw an object in a short period of time and this is all designed for practice. It's meant to be fun, so if you're following along, loosen up and have some fun. I know I'm gonna do the same thing over the next 30 minutes. That's right, 30 minutes. We're gonna create a drawing in 30 minutes. Really, it's more of a sketch. But before we get into it, I should preface this by letting you know that creating more finished and polished drawings and paintings do require a time commitment. This is all practice, this is all exercise. This is exercise just like you would work out in a gym um, to prepare for uh, playing a sport or something like that. We need to do drawing exercises to prepare for our finished drawings and paintings and that's what this is all about. But most of all, it's all about fun. So what are we gonna be drawing tonight? Tonight we're gonna be drawing a frog. So we're gonna draw a frog. Why are we drawing a frog? Well, why not? <laughs> a frog, of course, has some interesting interesting shapes, just like a lot of other things out there, but I love frogs as animals. So that's what we're gonna do here on our third episode of Getting Sketchy. Now I'd like to remind you that uh, we do have a membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com where each week I broadcast what's called a live lesson, which is an hour long lesson and usually these lessons are designed for longer and more polished drawings and paintings. And if you're a member, you can join us each week as part of our live lessons. You can ask questions and you can watch the entire process from start to finish of creating a more polished, more finished piece of artwork. We also have courses, we have eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, and a whole lot of other stuff over there. I've left a link below if you're interested in learning more about the membership program. And at the end of tonight's broadcast, I'll show you what we're working on right now for our live lesson series like I have with the previous episodes of Getting Sketchy. So let's take a look at the photo reference and dive right into this one. So we'll switch over to the main camera. And I should point out that I, I know that there's folks already showing up in the chat box and hello to everybody in the chat box. Rebecca wants to make sure that <laughs> she's selling his Say, saying hello, and I should point out that I don't send out any um, emails or anything to let folks know about this live broadcast, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But the first time I, I broadcast live on Facebook here, um, there were a ton of folks, and last week there were a ton of folks too, so um, hopefully a ton of folks will show up again. Usually it takes a couple seconds before they show up, but but anyway, um, let's, let's talk about what we're doing tonight. It, it, you can ignore the countdown for right now. I'm going to reset it in just a minute, but here's the frog that we're going to be drawing. I'm going to be working on regular old drawing paper. This is simply a, a drawing pad. I think it's 70 pound drawing paper. There's nothing special about it. You don't have to have super high quality materials to get started drawing and painting. There are a lot of people out there that are totally obsessed with materials, and there are folks out there that just collect materials. Um, and I'm one of those folks that collect materials, but it's because I use them. Uh, but there's a lot of people that let materials stop them from creating art. They get so obsessed on what they think they need to create art, and they make excuses for why they can't get into it and start creating art. Don't be one of those people. Um, get what you have, and and use it and create art. I'm just gonna be using a regular old 2B pencil. Now, it's not a regular old 2B pencil. It is a mechanical pencil. Um, and these are this is made by Stiedler or Stadler, but it has 2B graphite inside of it. Um, you can use a regular old writing pencil or an HB pencil, a number two pencil, whatever you wanna call it to do this. And like I said, I'm working on regular old sketchbook paper, uh, 70 pound drawing paper that you can pick up just about anywhere. I have a kneaded eraser in case we need to use it. And uh, this is my pencil sharpener here. I probably will have to use that at some point here. We're gonna to try to complete this drawing within 30 minutes, okay? And uh, while I'm in the process of drawing, I'll do my very best to look up at the chat box and try to answer questions. Somebody said your time is ticking. <laughs> I'm gonna reset this in just a minute. We're gonna have 30 minutes from start to finish to try to finish this sketch. We might get it done in under 30 minutes or it might be just under the gun that we get it finished. Um, but we'll see. So are we ready to get into this? I think I am. Um, I always say that. Um, and I always I always seem to underestimate how long it's going to take me to do a drawing. Uh, the first episode of uh, Getting Sketchy, uh, it, we barely made it under the gun. The second episode, the same thing. I was rushing and hurrying. And I feel pretty confident about this. When you just watch, I'm going to be rushing and hurrying there to get things finished. So I'm going to put 30 minutes on the timer and then I'm going to dive right into it. But before I do, 
I forgot completely what I wanted to say here about the frogs. Drawing is basically, drawing from observation is basically about locating basic shapes, drawing those basic shapes first, then concentrating on the contour lines or the outlines, then worrying about the texture and the value relationships. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna focus on the basic shapes that make up the frog. So I'm not gonna think about the contour, which is the outline. I'm gonna concentrate on the basic shape. So right here, I kinda of see there's a, somewhat of an egg, egg shape. And then there's somewhat of a triangular shape that's kind of rounded off up here. Those are the two basic shapes that I'm going to concentrate on first. Then I'll look at some of these smaller shapes that uh, make up the arms and the legs of the frog and fill those in and the eyes and so on. So I'm basically going to start with larger shapes and then gradually get smaller and smaller with the shapes. Then I'll go in and establish the contour lines. And very quickly, if we have time, we'll start developing the value, which value is the darkness or lightness of a color. And a lot of people, when they refer to shading, they're really talking about value. So if I say I'm gonna shade this drawing, basically that just means I'm gonna develop the value range in the drawing. Value is the technical term for that, uh, the, the art term for that. So let me uh, hop this frog right over here. Uh, so I can see it, and I've got a photo reference up there in the corner. I should also point out that this photo reference came from a wonderful site called Pixabay. That's pixabay.com. You can register for free there. I have no affiliation with them at all. It's completely free, um, and they have copyright free uh, images that you can use to create your art with, which is a, an invaluable resource for artists like yourself and artists like myself. All right, let's reset the clock. I'm gonna swing the big old mic around here and get it right up in my face there. <laughs> so it's all uncomfortable. All right, uh, we'll reset the clock. 30 minutes, let's go. So I'm gonna start with the basic shapes here. And like I said, I'm gonna start with kind of an egg, 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 egg eggy shape up here in the corner. Um, and then kind of a triangular shape that's a little bit rounded up here at the top. Now I'm drawing quickly and, and fast here. Um, if You don't have to do this with the time frame. And like I said at the very beginning of this, you know, if you're gonna create a more polished finished drawing, then you should not be timing yourself. This is, this is just practice here, it's for fun. And it encourages you, encourage you to, encourages you, <laughs> get my words out tonight, to draw quicker and looser. You can see I drew a bunch of different lines on here. Um, and if you draw lots of lines, you usually have a better chance of finding the right line. So I'll go back and find the right line in just a minute. And uh, so I'm gonna keep drawing with mostly my entire arm. So I'm, I'm using not just my wrist, but also my shoulder and my elbow to try to draw these basic shapes as I'm working down on in this Poor guy's toe is like bent backwards. I don't know if you can see that in the in the photo. I did do some editing to the photo. So if you do head over to Pixabay and you're looking for this in exact image, uh, you won't find it. The frog was positioned in a different, uh, he was facing the other way. And I took the color out and made it black and white. So not too heavy of uh, some editing going on there, but a little bit of editing there. So again, I'm just looking at the basic shape of the arm of the frog going down here and just trying to draw a shape that kind of mimics that. Again, going really quickly and loosely. It might seem counterintuitive that uh, you can get a little bit more accuracy by drawing this way, but you really can. So I encourage you, if you're kind of a slow drawer and you like to, to focus on those contour lines uh, initially, try drawing with shapes and uh, see if that helps you out a little bit. Just look at the basic shapes, try to draw the shapes. Don't worry about uh, extra lines and things like that. Just let things kind of happen there on the paper. Try to keep your mark making tool moving as much as you possibly can. Not only will it help you with your accuracy, but also bring a little bit of life to your drawing as well. And of course, we are just creating a sketch here. So of course, we don't have to worry about making everything super precise, but even if you're creating a drawing that is going to be super precise, this is the same way that I would start any drawing that I would create or that I create uh, with looser marks, just trying to figure out where everything is. And I'm going back and forth between the reference and the surface of my paper. So this is observational drawing at its purest. 
And you also shouldn't feel like you have to spend hours and hours drawing in order to get better at drawing. Now that might sound a little bit strange, but <laughs> you do have to spend hours and hours over the long term to get better at drawing, but you don't have to sit down and draw, for example, a five hour long drawing and uh, say that that has prepared you for further drawings in the future more so than than drawing 15 minutes a day would, for example. Because when, when you're drawing like we're drawing here with kind of a looser sketch, you're practicing the same artistic muscles, if you will, that you would if you were drawing a drawing that you spend many, many hours on. Because we're still observing the subject and we're still making marks based on what we observe. And that is basically the essence of drawing from observation, of course. So things get a little blurry back there on the, on the back leg here, but uh, I'm still gonna define those shapes to a certain degree. Let's go ahead and define the eye, the eye that's closest to us. So again, I'm gonna start making circles and then slowly bring my pencil down to the surface. I know that eye is not a complete circle. Now I'm gonna, the second eye that kind of pops up over here, I'm gonna look right here, right above there. I can kind of make a comparison of where it needs to pop up with this eye in place. And then I can kind of draw that shape there coming off. And we're starting, we're starting to see the frog. He's starting to take shape a little bit. Again, just a few basic lines, or a few basic shapes here with lots of different lines. All right, now I'm gonna put a little bit of information about what's going on with the pattern here, just to kind of help me line up some of the other bits of information in the drawing. And remember, this doesn't have to be totally accurate. Mine is definitely not gonna to be totally perfectly accurate, but in the end, it should resemble a frog. So I'm just kind of marking out where that black area makes its way down the body. And then we'll put a little bit of information about where we have some of these wrinkles that are happening here. We've got a wrinkle that kind of comes up here and then the back side of the mouth comes down and we'll let it curl up a little bit back there as it makes its way back. Another little wrinkle, and then we've got this little flappy part of the body here. This frog looks like it needs to work on some of its flappiness. <laughs> it's got some flappy parts down here, down the middle. Um, and we'll go up here. So a lot of this right here is kind of a darker value and then maybe a slighter lighter value and then a darker value again. Very quickly, I'm gonna erase some of these extra lines that we have in here with the kneaded eraser and I'm not gonna try to go too crazy with erasing these lines. I'm gonna erase them kind of loosely because we can let some of those lines remain in there. It's no big deal. But some of them we can get out of the way. And a quick peek at the clock. So we've laid out our frog basically in seven minutes. Not so bad, I don't think. All right, let's go ahead and define the log that he's sitting on or whatever this is that he's sitting on, kind of like a branch. There's just gonna be a couple of lines for this. We're not gonna go too crazy with it. In fact, we're probably not gonna draw much of it at all. Um, let's just let it be where he's sitting here. So the top part only, we're not gonna draw the bottom part. Unless, of course, we have time, so I don't think that's going to happen. So that'll be the top of our log there. Now let me zoom in a little bit as we start to uh, get a little bit more detailed. Now that I've got this in place, I can start getting a little bit more confident with the contour lines. Contour lines are outlines. Um, and so as I go around here and start defining some of the contour lines, I will make an effort to vary my line quality and uh, what line quality is well, line quality can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. 
<laughs> but uh, when I use the term lawn, lawn quality, I'm referring to the thickness or thinness of a lawn. And that's generally the accepted use of lawn quality. Basically, lawn quality is just referring to the nature of the lawns that you include in a drawing. But it's my opinion that you need to have some variety in that lawn. So your lawn shouldn't be the same thickness. Um, it should have variety. You can imagine your favorite food. I might have said this before here on one of the episodes, but uh, you can imagine your favorite food and what life would be like if you had to eat your favorite food for every meal for the rest of your life. Um, it might be cool the first day, but then after that it would get pretty old. But the same thing's true for a piece of artwork. We don't want to have uh, the same thing going on all the time. We want to have some variety. So this uh, kind of varying the line quality is going to make the drawing a little bit more interesting. And it also helps to create the illusion of form. Now, I, as I work down the arm, I can see I can make the line a little bit thicker down here. We're going to have some shadow. And I can make the line a little bit thinner where I know that we have light hitting in an area of highlight or something like that. So that's kind of a way to figure out where, where you should make the lines a little bit thicker and where the line should be a little bit thinner. And of course, you can be creative with it as well, because after all, you are the artist, and the decisions you make are yours. And as I say that, a lot of the, a lot of you guys who know me, um, who've been around for a while and watched a lot of the live lessons and been a part of the courses and so on, um, you know how I feel about drawing when it comes to people's style. I feel like everybody has their own unique style and that should be embraced by you. Um, don't, you know, it's fun to emulate and learn from other people as you're kind of learning your own personal style. But be true to your own personal style. All of us have our own, own style. And it will show up in your artworks over time. And some people try to run and hide from their style. <laughs> And uh, some people embrace their style, and it's usually the people that embrace their style that find the most success with their art. And sometimes the folks who try to copy other people's style, they might get really good at somebody else's style, but they never have their own. So they, they never really uh, make their own mark as an artist in the art world. All right, so just defining the contours around the eye. Let's go ahead and add some of those details in the eye. And this frog has kind of a shape like this on the inside of the eye. And there's a highlight up there. So I'm going to isolate the highlight and go ahead and fill in the value. Fill it in as dark as I can around there. And he's kind of got an upper lid here. right up, up there and then there's a little bit of shadow right behind there I'm kind of getting ahead of myself starting to add some of the shading but that's okay now there is a really beautiful texture that's happening on the inside of this eye and if we weren't creating a quick sketch here I would really spend some time developing that texture but for right now I'm just going to go in and put some kind of squiggly lines in there just like that on the top part and you can see it gets much darker on the bottom so we're going to do the same thing but we're going to allow it to be a little bit darker down there so we'll put a little bit of a heavier pressure on there all right kind of took a little bit of a deviation there with the eye for a second and then we'll continue to define the contours Deep shadow happening right underneath this part of the body. And we got all those little flappy floppy things happening under here. We got the other leg that wraps around the body and comes forward here. And these frog fingers. I have no idea what these are called. But I like frog fingers. I like calling them frog fingers. 
Um, do frogs? I mean, well, I mean, they wouldn't have hands, would they? I don't, I don't think frogs have hands. Do they have hands? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and enhance the contour here on the log too. All right, now we're ready to start adding the value and start developing some of the shading. And let's see, what, look at how much time we have. So in just 14 minutes, we've basically drawn out the overall form of the frog and got a lot of our contours in place. Now all we'll have to do is go in and add some shading. And uh, we might finish this one a little bit earlier than 30 minutes. We'll see what happens. All right, so there's lots of different ways that we can add uh, the value in the shading. We can do hatching, cross hatching. Um, I'm probably just going to use um, just a straightforward way of uh, changing the amount of pressure that you place on the pencil, which is the way you would probably assume that you would add shading or value. But when we add shading and value in a drawing, in most circumstances, we want to consider the texture as well, because the value plays such an important role in the texture that we perceive, uh, the relationships of the values, um, and also the directional strokes that we use lead to the illusion of texture. And this frog's got a lot of really cool textures on it. So I'm gonna kind of keep that in the back of my mind, but if we work really slowly, like we would really need to to finish this drawing as a proper drawing instead of a sketch, then I would really concentrate on the directional strokes and take it very, very slow. But because we're doing this as a quick sketch, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the value as quickly as possible, but uh, not quickly as possible, but as efficiently as possible. Um, but I'm also going to be considering the texture as I do so, but just not to the degree that I normally would if this drawing was a more finished, polished drawing that maybe we spent a few hours on. So I'm still gonna think about the directional strokes that I make as I'm applying the darker value. And even though this darker stripe right here is uh, very dark in areas, I'm still going to allow some variation to happen in that value to help create a little bit of an impression of texture. And whenever you're shading with a graphite pencil or really any darker drawing me media, always remember that you can always go back and make a value darker if need be, but it's gonna be really hard to go back and make a value lighter. You can make a value lighter with a kneaded eraser. You can kind of just use that kneaded eraser to lift up some of the material from the surface, but it's really a lot better to just really think about making the value a little bit lighter to begin with and then considering the fact that you can go back and make it a little bit darker if you need to. So I'm starting back here on the back, after I've got that black stripe defined, I'm going back here on the back where we've got this, there's a really dark value back there. And it's kind of a triangular shape there. And then I'm just gonna work my way up. Now I'm following, as I'm shading this area, I'm still leaving little spaces in between. You can kind of see that to help create the illusion of texture. But I'm also trying to flow along the form of the body of the frog. So in other words, I'm not shading this way or just haphazardly. I'm, I'm trying to flow along the back of the frog. And by doing that, I'm flowing along the form of the frog, the form of the body, and that is, or the, that technique or that approach is basically dealing with the cross contour lines. Cross contour lines are imaginary lines, sometimes they're visible, that flow over the form of a subject. And usually when you're trying to make decisions in a drawing on directional stroking, you should, you should flow along the cross contour lines. The same thing's true with a painting. Um, if you're creating brush strokes, you should consider, in most cases, the cross contours of that particular subject, and that will help you determine what direction you need to make the brush strokes. So if we were painting the frog, more than likely we would allow our final brush strokes to flow along the back of the frog like this. Now the value gets lighter and lighter as we get down underneath this arm. You can see he's got some really bumpy skin down there. 
and then we've got this strong shadow that happens right underneath the arm. So we'll bring bring that out a little bit further. And then we can make some of these wrinkles show up a little bit more. I'm going to try not to get obsessed too much in one area. So that because now we're down to 11 minutes. I've been working on this area back here. It seems like for five minutes now. So I've got to I've got to pick up the pace a little bit. Maybe I'm just trying to heighten the drama. I don't know. <laughs> uh, another thing you might notice is I'm using primarily the side of the pencil to do the shading. So I'm not going in there with the tip of the pencil. I'm allowing the, the side of the pencil to do the work for me. And also the texture or tooth of the paper. The tooth of the paper is the texture of the paper. And the texture of the paper actually helps a little bit in adding the value here because it, it kind of has a coarser texture. It's not super coarse, but you can see the marks that I'm making here in these areas where I am shading is a little bit different than the marks where we uh, define the contours. And here's an area where we can go back and make it a little bit darker right behind the eye. Make sure that it looks like it stands up away from the body. If you're having trouble creating a smooth gradation of tone and value, in other words, a smooth change from light to dark, and speaking of light to dark, we want to leave a little bit of a lighter line right above that dark line. Um, you might try a technique called circling, where you make small little circles with the side of the pencil. Not small circles, just small circular strokes. I should clarify that. And so I'm using that in areas here. I'm not going to blend this drawing with a blending stump or or anything like that. Um, although I, I'll do that from time to time. I'll never use my finger to, to do any blending, and that's because your finger has oils in it. And for whatever reason, the oils tend to mix with the graphite, and sometimes they can make a real mess. Um, it almost The graphite, when mixed with the oils from your fingers, almost becomes... a uh, a paint and it's very hard to remove from the surface. If you've ever blended with your fingers before, blended graphite before with your fingers, you've probably noticed that it's hard to erase and sometimes it makes your drawing just look uh, dirty. So we don't want that to happen, even in a sketch. Now we'll make a slightly darker value around the bottom portion of the eye. Looks like that's happening there in the reference. That eye kind of bulges out. You know, I'm just working my way back down. We'll add a little bit of a darker value underneath the mouth because it's there. And then we have this wonderful dark shadow right underneath the mouth. And that might just that might not be just a dark shadow, but also a pattern on the frog's body. And then we'll just continue with small circles. Hopefully you can see there's a change in value. It's a little bit darker out here, a little bit lighter out here, and that's what we're going for there. Just with a very light touch, we still need to have some value in place, some shading in place. Even though we might include it in our drawing, we might include some white spots. There really isn't any white. <laughs> There really isn't any black. And I know people are like, what is, this guy is crazy. Of course there's black and white. Well, I, I, I know, I understand where you're coming from. And I agree to a certain degree. But uh, we really only see a light, light gray or a or dark, dark gray. Um, if we actually incorporate black in our drawings, like super black, and we're trying to create a more natural looking drawing, then a lot of times it looks flat. This is this is mostly true when we're talking about a, a colored drawing. If we're doing a black and white drawing like this, of course we can incorporate black and, and white. But if you're doing a colored drawing, you, you might want to stay away from using black, and in many cases, pure white. 
you can use a super, super light gray. Or if you're creating a highlight in someone's eye or something like that, you might use a really, really light blue to do so. But it's those little things that really sometimes just separate a drawing or painting from looking realistic and then looking not so realistic. Sometimes there's little tiny things like that. So if you incorporated black in a painting uh, or a colored pencil drawing, for example, or something like that, and it looks unnatural and you can't quite put your finger on it, well, it's probably because you used black <laughs> instead of mixing the black or using a dark, dark, dark gray. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a lighter value down here, and then it gets really dark. We've got a little bit of a shadow that comes right along the bottom of the hand of the frog. If this isn't a hand, I, I apologize to frogs everywhere for saying you had a hand. <laughs> and frog lovers out there. I'm sure there's some frog lovers out there who are like, this guy doesn't know anything about frogs. That's true. I don't know much about frogs, but I think they're cool. <laughs> All right, we got five minutes left. Oh no, the drama. I'm telling you, I always, I'm always so confident uh, on how long it's going to take. I always, I always overestimate, but Maybe not. We'll see. I think, I think I might be able to get this one done here. So the patterning on the belly gets a little bit bigger down here at the belly. So I'm going to just allow a little bit more space here in between the shaded marks that I'm adding and kind of, kind of creating that a little bit of that pattern down there. Again, just using mostly the side of the pencil. And then that pattern kind of continues over this direction, but the value is a little bit darker, so it might get a little bit skewed. Since this is a quick sketch, it's it's okay if we don't get too worked up over everything that's happening down here in the belly of the frog. But we want to make sure that the values are as close as possible so that we've got some darker values down there. And we could, of course, go a lot darker with this. I'm um, shading this with a 2B pencil, as I said at the beginning. In fact, I've drawn the entire thing with a 2B pencil. And if you want to go a little bit darker, you could use a 4B pencil or even a 6B pencil. And there are folks out there that really like the ebony pencils. And um, there are lots of dark pencils out there that you can use to go quite a bit darker to create some of those dark, dark grays that are in there that exist in the photo reference and should technically exist in our drawing. But again, this is a quick sketch. It's meant to, as an exercise. Got some strong light hitting this part of the finger. So right above it, we'll make it a little bit darker because it looks like it's kind of in shadow as it goes backwards. We have three minutes. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close. Because we've got all this over here still to add. But a lot of this is kind of blurry. So we can kind of add some quick shading here. And there's not a lot of patterning going on here. Just some different grays. And we can record this fairly quickly. You know, even in a polished drawing, you don't have to have all of your lines be perfect or anything like that. You can still have lots of sketchy lines in a, a more polished, more finished drawing. Um, so I don't want you to get, get me wrong there. Um, I've seen lots of wonderful drawings that have a lot of loose marks, like a lot of the marks that we're finding in this sketch, but but still the drawing stand, stands on its own as a finished 
drawing and a lot of times really pleasing drawing to look at. All right, we just got this leg over here. Two minutes. Got a little bit more texture on this leg than what we saw on the other two that we just finished. But we have some lighter value up here near the front edge of the leg. And we've got that dark shadow. Let's make sure we get that dark shadow in there. And then it looks like there's a dark pattern right here. This is part of his dark pattern or her dark pattern. The frog lovers are out there. There he goes again. He, he absolutely, totally does not know that that's a female frog. The only frog that I'm a real expert in is Kermit, and that really isn't uh, a real frog. And then there's the Kermit lover out there that's saying, of course he's a real frog. <laughs> All right. 46 seconds. I think we've done it. I think we've uh, we've been able to, to finish this one to a reasonable degree anyway. All right, let's add a little bit of a spot back here. And we'll add a little bit more variety in the value since we've got a couple more seconds. We can make this edge a little bit darker right here to help bring out that white line. Value is all about contrast. So if you want to make a value appear a little bit lighter, like I want that line to appear a little bit lighter, we make the values around it a little bit darker. And because of that contrast, it makes it stand out a little bit more. Add a few more wrinkles here. And the time has expired, so we are officially done there. So there's our frog in 30 minutes. Um, again, this is meant to be a drawing exercise. It's meant to be fun. If you're not having fun when you're drawing and painting, then it's going to show in your in your final piece. Um, you should make it a habit of practicing sketching as much as you possibly can because it improves your overall drawing and painting skills. And I, I can't stand it. I've got to make this area a little bit darker. I know this is outside of the time frame. If you want to call me a cheater, that's fine. I don't care. Um, there we go. Um, anyway, drawing and drawing every single day for as little as 15 minutes is going to help you uh, really uh, see some considerable improvement in your drawing and painting. So um, this only took 30 minutes. It was a lot of fun. It didn't take me very long to find a good subject to draw and it didn't take me very long to, to draw it, but along the way it helped improve my own drawing skills because we're practicing that, uh, we're practicing looking at the object and finding those basic shapes and putting that information on our drawing paper. That's what drawing is. All the all of the information is there in front of us. It's on our subject or it's in our photo reference. All we have to do is take it from that and put it on the paper. That sounds really, really easy, but if you think about it that way, it's it should be a little bit easier than the way a lot of us think of drawing and painting. Drawing is a skill that anyone can learn. It doesn't require a special talent that you have to be born with. So uh, always keep that in mind. All right, uh, I told you that I would show you that what we're working on so far in our live lesson series, which of course is part of the membership program at the virtualinstructor.com. Again, I've left a link to that below. Um, if you want to join us in our current series, uh, you can. This is what we're working on right now. We're working on a uh, a pen and ink drawing of a horse and that combination of media a pen and ink and a horse is difficult but uh, we don't really shy away from difficult subject matter and medium combinations um, this is so far there's been four lessons in this series so this represents about four hours worth of work um, we're going to continue with this one tomorrow night but this is an example of a more polished, more finished drawing. And this, of course, is a sketch that only took 30 minutes. So um, let's see. I think that's it. Let me take a real quick, a real quick look at the chat box um, because let's see here. 
Uh, I don't see really any questions. The only th comment that I see, I mean, there's a bunch of comments in here, uh, but I think a lot of people know that. I have my head down. I can hear sound with the pictures frozen. I think everything uh, is, is going as normal. I think that was a few minutes ago anyway. Um, let's see, somebody put shadow is not value. Shadow has a value. Yeah, that's true. Shadow has a value and it's usually a darker value. And that's why when we talk about the value scale, the values on a value scale have specific names. The lighter values are called shade, or the lighter values are called tints, and the darker values are called shades. And you can make the connection there that shades is related to the word shadow. Um, so shadow is not a value. Shadow has a value. That's absolutely correct. When people refer to the process of shading, though, they're actually talking about developing the value. And that's what we did, you know, when we were adding the material on here. We weren't just adding value to the areas of shadow. We were adding value to the entire frog. Um, and even the areas that we left alone have a specific value. So if you misinterpreted what I said as shadow is value, no, they're not the same thing. Shadows are represented by shades, which are values. Um, so let's see. Uh, maybe you were addressing somebody else. <laughs> I just noticed that. Maybe you did. The chat box on here just goes so quickly here. Um, could you draw eight frogs in four hours? I don't think I could because now I need to take a break. So uh, let's, uh, I'm glad that you guys are finding some value out of this. I enjoy doing this. This is a good way uh, for me to do a little bit of drawing practice and broadcast it to you too. Not that I don't get plenty of drawing practice <laughs> with everything I create. But, um, this is really designed to help you um, and to show you the process. Uh, so uh, with that, let me switch over here. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around for getting sketchy tonight. I hope that if you draw it along, if you drew it, if you draw it alongside of me, if you drew alongside of me, that you uh, found it beneficial. If you just sat back and watched, hopefully you picked up a couple things too. Remember, sketching should be a regular practice if you are uh, wanting to improve your drawing and painting skills. Uh, even and I said painting skills because if you want to learn how to paint you gotta learn how to draw too in most circumstances. I have a lot of people come to me and say, I'm just interested in painting. Um, drawing and painting are very, very closely related. Uh, so if you wanna learn how to get better at painting, start with drawing. Um, you might not end up doing any more drawings, but painting is basically very, very similar to drawing. Um, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, thanks for joining me live, and I uh, hope you'll join me next week. I want to do this every Wednesday that I possibly can, somewhere in between 8 and 9 o'clock if possible. If you are already a member, I look forward to seeing you as part of the live lesson tomorrow night. If you're not, uh, just click on the link below, and you can check out our program. All right, with that, I'm going to say good night for this evening. Good night, everybody.